Hey there. Uh, so I was up at Vex Worlds earlier this year and saw a lot of really cool sets at the Hexbug booth. Um, one of which was the Vex Robotics off-road truck. Um, I was able to have a look at that. It's got a, a lot of really cool new curved panels and the new electronics that they for the retail Hexbug sets. Um, all of that looked like it would be pretty awesome. So when I heard that uh, the off-road truck was available to purchase, I went to hexbug.com and ordered a set. Um, manufactured suggested retail price is $69.99. I think you can also get it at target.com or in stores at Target. Um, I uh, think it looks really cool. You can see a lot of these new curved pieces that look really nice. Uh, you can see the new brain which is sitting here. There's no, it doesn't show any wires attached to it, but uh, we'll have a look at that once I open this up. It's, it says that it's for ages 8 plus, but it also has a uh, construction difficulty of 5. I think this number is what you know the age group of people they think will have fun playing with it uh, not so much the age group of kids that will be able to build it on their own for instance um, the manual has 140 pages in it and it's over 820 parts so it's a big set lots of steps definitely think uh, for anyone anywhere near that young you'll you'll want to uh, a parent or guardian to help build it. Um, <clears throat> one of the interesting things about the retail electronics is instead of having its own dedicated remote control it's using a smartphone app or a tablet app. Uh, VEX has produced uh, an app they call the VEX Pilot app uh, available for Android and for iOS so you can run it on your iPad or your iPhone or any Android tablet that is recent. Uh, it uses Bluetooth low energy 4.0 so you definitely will need a relatively recent version of Android. I, my Android phone is 5.1 it has uh, Bluetooth low energy 4.0 on it and I am able to uh, run the app on my phone uh, so I think you should be okay with most phones, uh, Android phones. It shows that there's they have instructions for an alternate build. These are instructions available in a PDF format electronically online. They don't come in the box. Um, but it's got nice big wheels. You can see there's a number of new parts. This, uh, this uh, tie rod part is new. Uh, I think the the rack might be new as well uh, and definitely lots of panels here that are new um, and all the electronics are new it's a, uh, a 9 volt motor and brain instead of the old retail hex bug brain was uh, I think it was three AA batteries so four and a half volts you could also get a, a C cell battery box uh, for some of their sets, the motorized robotic arm I think had a C-cell battery box, um, also three cells, so four and a half volts. Uh, but this one has a, a battery box. You can kind of see it in the back, right there. Uh, it takes six AA batteries, which it says on the box are required but not included. Comes with three of these new Vex Pilot motors and the Vex Pilot brain. It also has a uh, another electronic part in it that's uh, basically kind of like a rotation sensor or a potentiometer. Uh, it doesn't count rotations, it doesn't continuously rotate, so it's not really a rotation sensor in that way. But it's used uh, with the steering motor so that the smartphone app can tell how far the motor's turned and so when you try to control them steering it doesn't turn too far one way or the other um, says it has a rack and pinion steering which is you know 
there's a, a gear that turns the rack or shifts it side to side connected to a motor um, connected to the wheel with tie rods independent suspension you've got shock absorbers in the front shock absorber in the back um, <clears throat> Let's have a look at the back. So again, it talks about some of the different things that it features, the rack and pinion steering. Real working rack and pinion steering allows your build to move and function just like a real vehicle. Uh, you got the alternate build, you can download the PDF from their website. That's something I'd highly recommend is that uh, as soon as you get this set that you go to uh, the hexbug.com website and download any updates to the instructions in fact actually the instructions are at vex.com slash help slash build dash instructions slash off-road dash truck um, I'll have the link in the description below uh, there is a new PDF for building instructions that you'll definitely want to get um, but it's all Vex IQ compatible parts uh, it's got really big wheels. These are hollow. They're not solid tires, uh, air-filled. Um, yeah, lots and lots of parts. 820 of them. Lots of new parts, which is always cool. I like the body panels. Those look really neat. So let's uh, open up the box and take everything out and have a closer look at it. So the box is very full, there's not really any spare room in the box. Um, the manual is the full size 8.5 by 11 which I really like. Um, some of their sets come with the half size manual which uh, just limits the size of the, the pictures in the manual and makes it much harder, for, at least for me, makes it harder to see. These are their high quality manuals that they've been producing for the last couple of years. Really good instructions at the front. Multilingual. Most everything is pictorial though. Um, you've got a lot of different icons used throughout the manual that help you uh, know when to you know double check things like take notice of how things are oriented for checking this the angle of bent parts. You can use this diagram here you can use this to count uh, the length of beams and to keep you know make sure you've got the right length for axles and standoffs um, it reminds you to make sure that especially on these connector parts that you make sure you've got everything oriented correctly um, the flat side up in this case the flat side down in this case um, and in many cases, you, it actually has the actual size in the manual. So you see, for instance, here, it shows you the actual size. Even though the picture is bigger, the actual size of that pin is, the, is shown. The actual size of that pin. So they do the same thing with a number of different parts. Um, and after this first section with the instructions there's a really good inventory of parts and uh, you can see here that there's a lot of new parts um, <clears throat> some sloped uh, basically one wide by three long with two holes sloped at one end some curved slope panel here uh, a smooth almost like a, a tile with two pinholes in it uh, these five by two by five slopes are nice. Uh, those aren't aren't new; they've been around. Uh, they were in some of the sets from last year, the the hex bug or sorry, the BattleBot sets from last year. There's some more, almost like tile pieces, transparent green, white, and black. It's a one by one transparent tile with a pin. Um, some more curved panels here. Lots of these, eight of these curved panels, so a lot 
you know, this will be used in the front, um, a left and a right of this curved corner piece. These are kind of specialty curves that I'm not sure what you'd have use for outside of like a, a vehicle or a decorative piece of some sort. Um, lots of these one by in black, six of those and four of those. Um, so a lot of really nice cool new body panel pieces, curved slopes. Uh, that's pretty cool. Of course many of these pieces that have been around for a long time. Uh, all these different lengths for standoffs. The 8 long is, is a relatively new piece but it's been around since I think 2017. Um, this piece is actually a piece there's three in this set, but this this piece was in uh, one of the hex bug. Uh, I think the scarab is what this one was in. Uh, the legs on that kind of rested on this curved piece, which is it's a nice little piece. Um, these this is a part that I don't think has been in any of the retail sets at least. Uh, I saw a. Um, 3D printed version of that at Vex Worlds once. There may have been some out on the table in the Hexbug booth as well. There's eight that come in this set. Those will be used for making kind of custom angles. I don't think they're particularly strong. I don't know. We'll have to see how they work out. But uh, a way to create angled connections that each one doesn't have to have its own unique part in that, in that case. Um, you can see here some new parts here um, for the rack and steering. So these these two parts here are part of the, the front wheel assembly. Uh, the wheel will attach to the hub in there, the red piece, and the back side will be attached to the rack. Um, there's these special little red kind of half uh, um, spheres, I guess you could say, with a pinhole in the middle. And those actually fit into these uh, tie rods, I guess you'd call them. And uh, pins that go through that sphere and then the sphere sticks in there uh, and then it can connect to for instance one side of this piece and the other side to the end of the rack um, it's nice it's got five of these uh, shock absorbers um, I'm not sure why they went with five there's three at the back and then one on each side at the front um, and then you can see the electronics. There's the brain. This is the potentiometer or kind of like rotation sensor. So it'll rotate one direction and then rotate back the other way with a center point facing straight towards the top. The six AA battery battery box. Three batteries on one side, three on the other side. And then it comes with three motors. Two for the back wheels and then one for steering. So it looks like uh, it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of steps. Um, you can see here on page 47 they show how you connect up the various motors, uh, the angle sensor you can call it I guess. It has a little blue uh, angle mark on it. Uh, motor number two is the steering motor. You can see here it shows the that motor 2 is up front, motor 1 and motor 3 are at the back and uh, once you've got the brain hooked up then you could start controlling it. You don't have to finish the build before you can start playing with it. The rest of this is all styling, building the body that goes over the top of the, the, the chassis and like I said lots and lots of steps. Um, But this is the printed version and 
the most up-to-date version is the PDF on their website. So I would definitely recommend that if you are able to use the PDF and a laptop or a tablet, uh, I think you'll find that the building instructions in the latest version of the PDF are better and easier to follow. Um, this page here, for instance, if you look at this, it's got some really important stuff on it. This whole page says step 22. And you can see it's got uh, a little blue line saying, okay, this goes into here, and then this goes into here, and then this goes into there, and then this all goes into here. So it's like multiple sub steps all on one page. The PDF, uh, from what I've seen, the PDF looks like it has this described more clearly, easier to follow. So I definitely would encourage you to use the PDF. Um, but these are the parts. They're well organized in these bags. Uh, let's open some of these up and have a look at them.